Mr. Mark Selby, how are you, sir? God, yeah, you look like you're on the road again. Yeah, doesn't I stop, am, does it? I am in South Africa, actually. So. Are you? No, yes. Very nice. They produce a lot of a commodity called chrome that uh, yeah. we will be uh, using yeah. as part of our net zero metals steel and alloy facility. So there's some natural uh, opportunities yeah. there. So we're yeah, talking to a couple of the companies down here and... Uh, those Fantastic. discussions are going well. They'd like an outlet other than China to sell their material and would also like an outlet where that material can be converted in a zero carbon way to, you know, produce uh, to produce you know, to be used in, in our steel and alloy products that we're planning to build. So uh, and the jigsaw puzzle continues to be built. Well done, well done. Um well look, let's set uh, let's we're going to run through a bunch of company news. I think some yeah. some good stuff going on in there, company news wise. So uh, that that'll be fun. But first, as ever, let's just talk about the market. We seem to have green shoots. Yes, yeah. So so nickel. You know, we post Chinese New Year, as predicted, we saw the market go. Um, and it, and again, in nickel's traditional fashion, it ripped about twenty percent uh, almost in about uh, two weeks. Um, again, got ahead of itself. Rebounded, retraced, you know, almost three quarters of that move higher. Um, and now we've now moved back up um, over the last two weeks here as there's been enough sort of positive no- uh, noises in the market to, you know, up into the low 18,000s. We peaked out on that first run in the high 18s, but, you know, we've basically, you know, now recovered most of that. Uh, LME inventories are down a few thousand tons this week. So, you know, that helps underpin the, you know, the view that, you know, things are, you know, not, not, not in bad shape uh, in terms of the nickel market. And as I said, you know, for the last few weeks here, you know, I think we trade in this range for a while until we get some very clear signs that, you know, we're going to see strong demand through both the stainless and and the EV sector through the balance of the year. But again, by forecast at the start of the year was for 20,000. So the fact that we're, you know, just about less than 10% away from that target um, in April is uh, is is excellent. Bodes well. It bodes, bodes well. And, and and some of the other kind of influencing factors, China as ever, but also also Europe. Um, well, let, let's talk. Let's talk China first. We'll get get to the travails in Europe in a minute. Yeah. So um, nickel prices, nickel prices sort of globally all ticked higher um, last week. Uh, it was nice to see stainless prices tick up again. We've seen a few weeks of of stainless prices moving higher, and uh, you know, for those of you who've been watching it for a while. Those stainless price movements are the thing that we, uh, you know, tend to look at in terms of you know overall market health. So again, not you know nothing to write home about yet, but headed in the right direction. Uh, you know, the other thing that happened last week with the move in nickel prices, uh, sulfate prices actually ticked down a little bit, which is surprised at. But um, uh, but that that big move in the nickel price basically squeezed the premium for sulfate back down towards you know the you know either side of neutral. Is which is where I expect it to be long term, but you know, still still in decent shape. NPI prices actually ticked up a little bit last week. You know, again, nothing to write home about, but you know, sort of again, sort of green shoots and and and, and multiple things heading in, in the in the right direction. So good to see. And then Europe, um, we've got a few uh, plants that were things were on strike. You know, prices were already moving higher there. So again, you know, everything's sort of getting back into balance, and and that's helping to you know lower inventories through the supply chain. Uh, in Europe, which uh, you know, which will you know continue to support prices as as people you know restock later in the year. So, yep, all, all good on that. All on those fronts. Well, okay, I think that that can, the kind of you know couple of plants you know with strikes and well, there's enough going on in Europe with with, with still Russia and Ukraine issues, but it's, it feels like it's a very small industry, a very brittle industry where if a couple of key components go out of out of kilter. It does affect the price, you know, positively, negatively, quite, quite quickly. And you know, as an ambassador, you kind of want to feel that there's a kind of smooth running here. I mean, what can we expect to see off the back of recent nickel performances in, in terms of governments wanting to have a little bit more calm in the market? Are they going to do anything about it? Are they going to help? Um, is industry going to sort itself out? And what happens? Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I think part of the opportunity and part of the reason the markets, you know, are, I mean, stainless steel historically has always been whippy. Um, you know, as nickel prices have been volatile, that volatility has followed through in, into the stainless steel market. And 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 some of the historical pricing mechanisms actually encourage, um, reinforce um, that, that volatility. Um, and those are still in place. There's been discussions from time to time about eliminating some of those pricing mechanisms, but uh, that hasn't happened. The the you know the, the thing we see with U.S. and Europe is 
both of them have set up tariff barriers. And so what happens is because there's no free flow of goods between different markets, you know, if you do get a disruption positively or negatively in a market, you know, it disproportionately affects that market. So, you know, that's that's why, you know, we've seen these moves in Europe. They, they've effectively shut out a lot of uh, stainless steel from 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 the east. Um, and the same thing with the U.S. Uh, Joe Biden this week, you know, at a campaign rally talking about even you know tripling tariffs on 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 U.S. and uh, steel and aluminum products. Yeah. Uh, again, when people ask why, you know, Canada Nickel, are we doing this net zero metals and, and getting involved in the downstream business? It's exactly this opportunity. You know, the government wants you to build capacity is providing, you know, those tariff barriers basically, you know, provide you pricing premiums um, that you can then pursue. So, you know, a- as we move forward through here with, you know, the noise with China and Russia, you know, we're going to continue to have, um, uh, you know, we're going to continue to see. Um, governments, uh, you know, help promote you know, domestic supply chains. So, um, you know, I mean, just- we, we've talked a lot in the past about bifurcated markets, and you know, it, it kind of it kind of feels it's definitely definitely amped up uh, somewhat with Biden's comments this this week. I don't know what you know, you know, Europe is making steps to make sure that it, it has less reliance on China, but um, I know there's a bit of an anti-China rhetoric going around at the moment. But yeah. do you see that continued? change in terms of how pricing is decided and def, you know def, like in the US and in, in, in Europe and, and rest of the world um it's like we're gonna see more of that this year next year oh for sure yeah no I, I think lo- like long term you know sort of I think you know sort of where we are today should really be seen as a base and and you know going forward you know that the, any kind of pricing differentials market differentials are, are just going to continue to move higher I mean the other big move this week was uh, the banning of Russian nickel and aluminum from the LME and COMEX uh, warehouses. It won't really have, I mean, again, the, the same material is going to be produced. Um, Rush, you know, Norelsk is probably going to, you know, have to eat some of uh, the, the costs to get traders to buy it because traders are going to have to move it, you know, to a bunch of different markets than they otherwise would. So it's good for the trading companies who now have to reposition all this nickel globally. Um, you know, net net is not really going to impact the overall supply demand balance, and, and and again, in terms of pricing, we've moved higher this week, but nothing nothing spectacular off the, off the back of of that announcement. Right. Okay. Um, we, we shall see. I'm sure, I'm sure there's more of that to come because it, it was pretty sort of adversarial um, type commentary. Um, I, I thought car sales. We've had a yes. bit of good news off the back it, of last year's quite good news. So what, again, what can you tell us? You know, EVs. Uh, uh, what the agents, one of the agencies that tracks global sales, you know, we're up 21% first quarter year over year. Um, that was impacted. Europe was the slowest market, um, only up 7%. And that's really a year over year impact of German subsidies being cut. Uh, you know, that's the part people need to keep in mind looking through data here. We've had some pretty generous subsidy programs from time to time. And, and when the governments announce that they're going to cut it, it does two things. It pulls demand forward as people want to buy cars before the big subsidy uh, comes com- comes out. Um, so it pulls sales forward, and then when the when the subsidy actually gets cut, it takes a while for sort of sales to you know build back up again. So it kind of masks what the underlying you know s- sales demand trend looks like. But you know again the, these these kind of growth levels um, you know are very robust, and I think as the year goes on, you know we'll see those year over year numbers. You know, continue to reaccelerate as 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 the global economy you know is has been a lot stronger than most people expected it to be at this point after all the interest rate rises that we've seen. Right, we 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 shall see. We'll keep a close eye on um, those figures. Um, EV EV sales. Um, fear not, folks. <clears throat> it's it's all growing. Right, I think we're going to leap into company news. Um, I'm going to start us off with a company which we talked about almost well it's three and a half years ago. And we were concerned then. Unfortunately, it's come to bear. Horizonte Minerals. What can you tell us? Yeah. So, um, yeah, it's unfortunate um, to see this happen in the nickel sector. Um, uh, again, for the you know, we, there's been a series of releases that you know, last August said on time on budget. Six weeks later, said not so on time and not so budget. And they've now they've you know came up with a, an up- updated um, project cost, which was significantly higher. Um, than than what was pre- previously estimated, and that that you know that you know uh, had a, a pretty significant cost to complete to get done. Uh, they've then canvassed uh, the market to get the financing package 
put together to see you know what uh, would be possible. And again, remember this is a company that Glencore, um, uh, Orion, and La Mancha all had uh, investment stakes in. So some guys are pretty well capitalized, and they basically announced this week that you know they haven't been able to put a funding package together. Uh, the senior lenders on the property, um, of which I think all three of those guys, you know, have some sort of security over the property, you know, uh, would be in a position to effectively enforce their security and take, you know, as as Horizonte said, all the assets um, in the group. So, um, you know, leaving the company with with pretty much nothing. So, um, well, there we go. That's painful ride down. So, it's a painful painful ride down. Um, it, it, sometimes these things are. Almost inevitable. You got to choose your, choose your partners carefully. Um, you've got to be clear about your your financing capabilities, and to be able to you know whoever's going forward with this asset because the uh, the assets you know it's fine at the right price. Um, yep. Whoever picks this thing up, yep, could have a bargain on their hands. Well, look, and and that's what we say. We need we need all the nickel we can. So you know, it's, I think it's a shame for our horizontal mineral uh, shareholders potentially, um, but whoever picks it up. We'll be able to make a make a, a quick buck of it, I think. Um, yeah. Let's let's go back to to um, safe, more savory pastures. Um, Aston Minerals. Yeah, so those are our neighbors in the Timmins Nickel District. Um, they're they're just just north of our one of our our southern properties, um, and yeah, they've had some you know been able to you know duplicate our success. Uh, they uh, announced an updated resource, so they're they're working towards. Uh, scoping study, and so they wanted to move a bunch of uh, the reserve resource in from inferred to indicated. Did that quite successfully, forty four percent increase in indicated resource, and they also bumped up the overall uh, resource, you know, by another seventeen percent in terms of the inferred category. So, you know, again, the team there, experienced mine builders, uh, you, know, you know, know what they're doing on that front, and uh, you know, good to see another project in the Timmins district, uh, you know, continue to move move forward. Okay, let's talk about their neighbors, Canada Nickel. Yeah, so uh, two announcements last week. Um, so first one was uh, front end engineering design. So this is the uh, initial engineering work that you go do after you've completed the feasibility study as you head towards a production decision. So you know, again, we are laser focused on uh, you know being in a position to make a construction decision uh, mid year. There's several work streams that are underway in terms of financing, engineering, and so forth, and permitting. Um, and so we uh, we and uh, awarded the contract to Asenko, who's been a long-term partner all the way through. You know, asenko has got a great track record with big sulfide projects. Uh, so we're excited to be able to work with them. And, uh, uh, you know, the other team of engineers involved in the feasibility study will be in, involved in this place. And then what this allows you to do is do enough uh, enough engineering so that uh, for the long lead items that you'll eventually need to order, which, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll need to do if we want to keep schedule uh, uh, early next year. So um, good on that front. And then our net zero metal subsidiary, again, along the engineering vein, uh, announced uh, uh, agreements with SMS and METSO, uh, both of those leaders uh, in the industry. It's you know great for a company to, be, to, to, to work with us. I mean, SMS it works with companies that are 100 times the size of us. And so uh, I think people should read through that, you know, you know this is these people, you know, design and build um, steel plants. And so the fact that they've chosen to work with us on, on what we're doing in the Timmins district is is a great, um, you know, photo confidence in terms of, you know, where we're heading down the path. Um, they tweeted out some, uh, you know, some um, additional commentary in addition to our release. So, you know, look very much looking forward to doing that. That's the other part of, of why we're down here. Some of the testing facilities for some of the equipment uh, that we're going to be working with. Some of my team are down here with me uh, looking at that as well while we're uh, here in South Africa. Busy year for you. Busy year for you, you know. There's a there's a, there's a nice punctuation point at the end of this year um, as well. But but from from now to, now till then, you've got a you've got a lot of um, plates spinning. Feeling confident about this year, and in, in terms of the market, in terms of your ability to um, get these things finished. Oh, for sure. I think you know on the market side, in in December, Jan- early January, uh, you know the, the sky was falling. Nickel was going to be horrible forever. BHP said the market wasn't going to balance. Till the end of the decade, I said prices were going to start moving higher post Chinese New Year, you know, and, and and that that market story is unfolding. You know, we've been able to you know b- build out the team um, in, in a way that allows us to you know execute on multiple fronts. So whether it's permitting, uh, whether it's engineering, whether it's putting the you know the full financing package together, you know those those things are all going well. 
And, 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 it, and a piece there too is as you're talking to people, right? So as we're talking to potential lenders, as we're talking to, you know, potential project partners, uh, as we're talking to, you know, we're, we're going to be building out the, the, the teams of, 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 of net zero metals. And, and when you talk to people who've been in the industry 30, 40 years have a great track record, you know, and they're excited to, you know, to, to potentially come on board and be involved in what we're doing there really validates you know, our underlying thesis of, of, of the market very, very much needing this capacity. Um, and we're in a great position uh, with, with governments providing funding, um, you know, for exactly these type of projects. So, you know, yeah, we, we're, you know, very confident in terms of what we're going to be able to get done this year. Okay. And then we, let's, let's go to a company not too far from, well, an asset not too far from where you are today, which is Premium Nickel. Yep. Just, just, up, the, just up the highway. Um, yeah, so their Celebi deposit. So they, you know, they're one of the companies. They raised a good chunk of money, and so uh, they've been uh, releasing a study flow of drilling results. Uh, so some good results, actually. Uh, you know, the key here is to be able to uh, extend the resource uh, and you know get more nickel. You know, they they report a lot of stuff on a nickel equivalent basis because in different parts of the ore body, the copper grades are actually much higher than the nickel grades. Um, but you know, again, getting some decent you know multi percent nickel grades over. Uh, some decent widths and outside the current resource envelope. So, you know, if we see more of those occurring, uh, that's good. And it's just a question of, you know, how big, um, you know, the resource resource could be, but, you know, which is always, which is always tricky um, with these higher grade deposits. So, but uh, again, good, consistent results and, and we'll, you know, continue to, to continue to track that one going forward. Right. Okay. And and the one we've never talked about before, um, we're going to introduce to Naris Metals. Yeah, no, surprising. So, uh, I, I, yeah. I hadn't come across them before. So, uh, Agua Blanca was an asset that was operated by Lundin Mining uh, up until uh, the latter part of the last decade. Uh, we, we actually looked at it in a past life. Um, it's a nice little uh, nickel copper operation just sitting north uh, of Seville. Um, so, so this group uh, they have uh, several several assets within the portfolio. One of these um, uh, is is a fifty percent interest in Agua Blanca. They announced a PFS on a restart. Uh, and, uh, you know, pretty decent numbers. Uh, it's not going to be massive, but, you know, A, it's, it was a, you know, well-built mill, um, you know, uh, mine that had, had some geotechnical challenges, but I think, you know, where the mine sits today is, 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 is it's past those. And, and then more importantly, they've got a bunch of other assets um, in southern Spain. Uh, and so being able to have that mill, you know, a uh, licensed mill and tailings facility in that area, is 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 great you know that the that that belt in in southern spain is one of the more prospective areas in 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 in, in europe and so uh I, I think you know that was that was our interest was not just agua blanca but the mineral potential uh where they've been mining since roman days uh the mineral potential of that area uh, europe is never easy to get things permitted but you can you know you can get things through there there's several operating mines in the Seville region so no, yeah, just the company to keep an eye on. Uh, again, just came across it today, so haven't had a chance to really take a good look at it. Okay, well there we go. There's a, there's a few companies to think about and, and go away and have a look at, folks. Um, Mark, as ever, thank you very much for the the update on on uh, nickel. So we're feeling quite confident about this continued um, price appreciation um, till the towards the end of the year, but hopefully slower and steadier and a bit a bit more uh, reliable. I hope we'll see. We shall see. Yep.